Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. Our guest today is Michael Broderick. He's an actor and a musician who's one of those guys who's unintimidatingly handsome, which means all the chicks understand what he has going on, but by the time the dudes do, he's already escaped with your girl, which of course is not true. He's been married many years to his wife, Dana, who he met playing guitar at CBGB. But that's a conversation for another time. What it really means is that he's an actor who shows up in the scene, and takes command of the situation. He's a Marine Corps veteran and a powerful supporter of veteran causes and helping veterans transition into civilian life, which you know is near and dear to the Break It Down show. And he and Dana are founders of the autism advocacy website, RethinkingAutism.com, where their mission is to change the conversation from causation and cure to acceptance and understanding. Now, as always... If you like what we do, I'm going to ask that you help us out. I'm not going to ask that you rack up credits in TV shows like The Unit, Bones, Criminal Minds, and Justified like Michael has. I'm just asking that you press a couple of buttons and drop us that five-star rating. Write us a little review in iTunes or Stitcher or whatever platform you're listening on. Or if you catch us on YouTube, that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can always get the freshest. Digital love, that's all I'm asking. Speaking of love, you're going to love our guest today. We sure do. Here's Michael Broderick. Lions Rock Productions. This is Jay this Moore. This is Greg Proops. This is Jordan Harbinger. This is Dexter from The Offspring. This is Nathan this East. This is Sebastian Younger. This is Rick Morales. This is Stuart Copeland. This is Mick Gillette. This is Andy Summers. Hey, this is Scott Baxter. This is Gabby Reese. This is Rob Bell. Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. Hey, and this is Pete A. Turner. Hey, this is Michael Broderick. You're listening to The Break It Down Show. And now, The Break It Down Show with John Leon Guerrero and Pete A. Turner. Yeah, this is cool. So first off, thanks to the Armbar guys because uh, they're the ones that hooked us up. And yeah. I love those guys. They're going to be, they've already been on the show. I'm going to put that up probably in two weeks or so. And then uh, I'm doing their show in a couple of weeks. And yeah, that's great cool, how man. we all just cross-pollinate. And I don't know if you, do you know Scott Husing at all? No. We will all be together in the same room soon because oh, Scott nice. is also part of this community. And then I want to for sure plug the veteran entertainment thing, but I can't remember the name. Veterans and Media and Entertainment. Yeah, yeah. I'm in. I'm going to sign up, give my $25 or whatever it nice. is because there's, I've got a lot of knowledge on how to do this uh-huh. and then all of the things. And that got me to thinking about a, a crazy movie idea. And I've got no time to write any screenplays. Yeah. But if I did, I would like to write Battalion Hollywood. And it'd be like, you know, you, me, Larry Wilcox, of course, mm-hmm. you know, because you got to have a salty old general. We'll get Nate. You know, it's fun. Did you somehow, did you, because I mentioned that in an article once. Did you like research You around? mentioned that in an arm bar. I did my oh, research okay, with okay, those guys. Oh, okay, okay. Then my recruiter said, oh, Larry Wilcox yeah. is Yeah. That's funny. I didn't, I was like, who did I tell that to? So one of the <laughs> things I do is when I listen to shows, I'm like, okay, we'll use arm bar as yeah. like part one. Yeah. And not cover all of like your wife, you know, doubling down and believing in you and coming out here. So all, all you guys go listen to arm bar. It's fantastic. And you'll get the cut up version of, of your background. Right. And we'll try to get into other things with our episode because I want to give folks some new angles on you. You yeah. know, I mean, the acting thing, of course, we'll get into all that, but also about your autistic child and everything too. Sure. That's. All of those things comprise who we are, and it's not captured in an hour. Oh, know? absolutely. Yeah. 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 And, you know, it's funny. I, I, you'll have to forgive me ahead of time because, you know, when you do podcasts and stuff, you, you tend to repeat yourself because yeah. everybody has different listeners and whatever. So if I, if I go over anything that I went to, over on, uh, on we'll be good. Bar, I, uh, we'll be good. Yeah, I, I apologize. Yeah. So, okay, you, you work in Hollywood. You're an actor. What's your current gig right now? Have you got something? Because we're just past pilot season and all that. Did you get anything figured out no, for this no, year? Like, I don't, I'm not a recurring mm-hmm. or you know series regular on anything right now. Not so yet. I bounce around show to show. Right. Episodic ser- season is just starting up again. So the, yeah. so the auditions are starting to roll in. I had a great audition yesterday. Nice. Recently booked a film for the, that's, uh, Lionsgate is producing. I uh, haven't been given the green light to talk about it yet. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't ask, but I, I haven't been given the green so light. So I guess me. what I want to give the audience an idea of is, is because there's so many different ways to do it. Yeah. There's a guy uh, we're going to have on the show in the future. He's actually in Hungary right now. He's from my hometown. Mm-hmm. A couple of years, like just far enough ahead of me that I never knew who he was, but right. the guys in between us are like, oh, he's an actor. Yeah. He does all kinds of character things. And so like, yeah, Tom Hanks, great, but there's a thousand ways to do this thing and have a really good living. Like Mark Valley used to be a co-host on the show yep. when he first started. He's the same kind of thing where he's like, I only take the gigs I want to do because I got to be passionate about it. So he primarily sure. does his own stuff. So 
Um, what is it like to be a guy that goes out, does auditions, books, movies, books, procedurals, books, books, books? How do you manage that? How do you manage the not saying yes to everything while being available to anything? Well, I'd love to say that I could, you know, I'm in a position to turn things down. Yeah. But I'm still in a position where, I mean, when you work day to day, you know, yeah. when you're a day player, you, you pretty much have to take right. everything. I mean, unless it's something I just, I have a, a problem with, but right, that yeah. hasn't, I don't think that's come up yet. Okay. I've, I've passed uh, on a couple auditions mm -hmm. where, you know, I'd read the, the, the breakdown of the, you know, the character or, or read what the, the, the plot is or whatever or the script and just be like, you know what, this isn't something I want to be a part of. Right. Um, I've done that before with things that were, that misrepresented the military, oh, okay. things like that. You know, yeah. I don't have a problem with veteran or, or an active duty person being portrayed as a villain, you know, sure. but it depends on the case. If it's a misrepresentation, if that's presented as the status quo, yeah. as opposed to an outlier, right. you know, I, I got a problem with that. Yeah, yeah. And so that's not something I want to be a part of. But for the most part, Hollywood tries to get these things right. I mean, they pay people it's like us to get it It's gotten a lot better. Right. Yeah. It's got a lot better. And I think that's, that's directly due to groups like VME, and, and more veterans getting involved because now when you're working alongside people, yeah. whether, you know, that it's the grip who's a veteran and he's a great worker and you're right. like, oh, this guy's, you know, this guy's great. It's not yeah. like these guys are a bunch of mindless, um, I should say, I shouldn't shortchange the women. So like right. the men and women are, are a bunch of mindless idiots. Yeah, yeah. So I think just being involved in Hollywood has changed perception at, at the ground level and yeah. then everything else flows from that. The overall work that you do as a veteran, I've talked to, like we've had Chad Michael Collins, who's similar to you, where he does a lot of procedural type work and everything. And the, the driving theme seems to be, and he kind of came in through his own unique door. He's not a veteran, but he's came here to do something else, like with PR. Right. And they're just like, hey, uh, handsome young guy, why don't you try out for this role? Because huh. when he shows up, he brings something, right. you know, which is a big hurdle for people to have to get over. Like if you don't deliver a... You know, like we talk about the truth, right? You know, show up on time, sure. you know, tell the truth. But truth is not the lines at a lot of times. It's like when he shows up, you're like, oh, there's that person. He just embodies certain things. Right. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I mean, I think other people have to work more at that. I mean, you know, there is yeah. a, there, there, that thing that's called the it factor is a real thing. You know, when people step into a room and there's just a magnetism. Yeah. Sometimes that's confidence alone. Sometimes it's it's something ethereal. Yeah, I'll tell you, I've been fortunate to meet a lot of you know famous people yeah. or whatever, or work with them or whatever. But there was one person that above, head and shoulders above all else. I was in the same room with Dennis Hopper once, mm. and in the same room where I'm not going to name other people yeah. because you know I don't want to say they didn't have it. But right. it was people at his level, yeah. you know, like iconic type people, but there was something about this. The air around him was just crackling. Yeah. And the intensity, you know what yeah. I mean? And he's just still and silent and listening and, and you know, whatever. Yeah. And I was like, wow, whatever that is, that's yeah. the first time I experienced it like eyes on. You're right. Cause I'm fortunate to have a similar experience. You know, when you talk to these quote unquote famous people, but he likely, I'm assuming, because I don't. I've been in the same room as Dennis Hopper uh, during his. He was doing a, a talk about one of his movies with the director during the Las Vegas Film Festival. And I was too far back to feel it. Yeah, you know, you're, I, you know, fifty people back. But I imagine that he can't help it. Like he just is that. Yeah, like I said, it was literally he was just sitting there, right? And there was just something about him. And like I said, there were other people in the room that were at that level, like iconic sure. people. Yeah. And I was like, oh well, wow, there's so and so, yeah. there's so and so, there's so and so. But there was something about him. Yeah. It was just it was yeah. it was coming off him in waves. I know uh, Jay Moore has become a friend of mine, and when Jay Moore, when like I mean, I know uh, I don't yeah. know him. I, you know, of course, I know him now because he's he's famous. But yeah. back when I was in New York, when I first came out of the Marines, I, I, I tried stand up comedy. I used to you know jump up at this little Boston Comedy Club. It was called uh, yeah. down like I think Third Street by the Blue Note, maybe Fourth Street. Anyway, he was like he was really up and coming then, you know. Yeah. And when he would show up, you know, everybody gets bumped. You know, yeah. him, it was like him, Mark Maron, Louis sure, C.K. Like, but all these guys were like big in the circuit. Yeah. Hadn't yet broken, you know, like uh, on mm -hmm. TV and stuff like that. Yeah. That was an interesting time. But anyway, Jay Moore, great. No, but he, when you sit across from him, and this was my first real exposure to this level of talent. And maybe, you know, in terms of where he's at in Dennis Hopper, maybe he's well below Dennis Hopper. But he has this 
laser beam boom, of energy right, he right. shoots at you when he switches on. Like before we're doing anything, we're just goofing, we're just goofing. Yeah. But then when he's on and he's trying to deliver something for you, you have to, and he's a high energy guy. Sure. So you just get blasted with this energy. You're just like, oh. And I've, I mean, I've encountered a lot of people. because so I was a spy, right? Uh -huh. So my job was to go out and talk to all kinds of people, but I had never encountered that where you just, you know, like you can be overwhelmed by someone's intellect or mm -hmm. someone's other, but I've never had the energy just shot at me. Yeah, yeah. And just blow back and i remember Vinny talking about this you know I'm like you get into that acting one-on-one -on -one moment and you realize uh oh i'm not keeping up right 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 yeah. that has happened fortunately only once where yeah. you know just prep wasn't what it should have been right and you, you know and it's go time yeah and, and different shows are different you know right. sometimes people are like you know they're they're still reading their sides right before we say action you know but other times it's like well every time now since that happened earlier right. in my career yeah i show you know especially when you're a day player you just show up just you're ready to go yeah you know because you don't want to be the, the the weak link right but yeah matching energies with somebody especially you know you, you lock eyeballs and, and and it's on yeah yeah and when they do that and i imagine that's like the speed of the game like the nfl the young players are always like oh my gosh it's so fast up here you know right and you learn it and you figure out how to get up to the speed of the game so it happens that one time when you realize oh this is this is the level. How do you how do you get to that? You come in the garage and just do the Hulk Hogan and start shaking and amping well, up and prepping. Well, or how that do depends you... on what what it is. Like yesterday for this audition, I had you know I work out with this group called Lacey Group. John Lacey is, a, is okay. an actor who who runs an acting group. We get together on Tuesday nights and we throw down. You know, we do scenes or whatever, and it's all based on Meisner technique. And Meisner says, you know, there's one decision. You mm -hmm. know, they say, oh, it was a choice. It was a choice, an artistic choice. There's one choice an actor needs to make, and that's what is the emotional life of the character. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, John says, come in loaded. Meisner said, don't, don't come in empty. Mm -hmm. right? You got to load it up. Right? The words are a canoe uh, that, uh, the, that are provided for you, and the actor's, the emotional life is the river. Yeah. So it could be turbulent. It could be still, plastic, sure. whatever. Yeah. So yesterday I had this audition, and it said right in the thing, you know, father, whatever, furious, right? So I'm like, furious is not, that's a very particular word. Yeah. It's not always mad, he's angry, he's pissed off, he's furious, yeah. right? So for all morning before my audition, I'm making my, I'm, I'm staying away from my son. Yeah. You know, I'm just I'm like, because I'm just making myself angry. Yeah. And by the time I got over there, I was practically sick to my stomach. Yeah. You know, but I, like, my launch, your launch is everything in an audition. You got to mm -hmm. launch. You can't hope to kind of build up to a moment. You know, yeah. you've got to have it in. You, you bury it, but it's got to be in there. It's got to be percolating. And, and, and yesterday, like I said, I almost made myself sick. By the time I finally, you know, I walked out the door and I was just like, <sighs> you know, and you get this mm -hmm. kind of post adrenaline rush, yeah. you know, yeah. or rather come down, I should say. But that's what it's all about. This is acting one on one. I don't pretend to be angry, I get yeah. angry. Right. You know what I mean? I make myself angry. So you more of a method guy in general, or I don't. This is see. This is I would call this Meisner. Okay. This is uh, Meisner is all about loading up the emotional condition. Yeah. And even using substitutes, which okay. I, I think I'm not as familiar with the method. Sure. But I don't think the method they use substitutes. It's like they use actual experiences, yeah. things like that. Whereas I, I, you know, I'll just think of things that make me mad. Yeah. Yeah, it works. Well, it's interesting because furious. Like if you look at the roots of those words. You know, us means full, mm -hmm. you know, so like wonder us. Or, right, right. You know, laborious, you yep. know, so they really, you are full of of fury, fury. Yeah. right? Do you believe that that word fear, like, I, I know the writer writes what they want, but do you trust that they really mean furious or do they mean have irate? To. Okay. You have to. I mean, it's, yeah. it's one thing if, if you're, if you're like when I was on True Detective, you mm -hmm. get used to the way the writer writes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so not that I would ever say that Nick Pizzolatto doesn't mean every word he says. Of course. He right. absolutely does. Yeah. But I'm sure there are, there are writers on shows where it's a, it's a team of writers yeah. and, you know, whatever. So they might use words because use words that, that, that aren't necessarily as accurate yeah. as they could be. Yeah. So you have to trust yeah. the pattern of the show or the, or the, or the tone of the show. Mm -hmm. But at an audition, you have no idea. Yeah, you no have idea. to, you have yeah. to take their word for it. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and just, <laughs> and go with it. Funny though, you have to trust the tone of the show. What was I just going to say? Ah, it doesn't matter. It's flew by. It'll flew come by. back to you. Okay. So, so furious, right? You come in and you've got the fury. Ah, that's what it was. Do you mind? Perfect. So that's what I hoped. Would happen. I'm amazed at how many words have been dumbed down to just mm. mean good or great. Yeah. Like, Yes. Awesome. Yes. Does not mean great. 
fantastic does yes. not mean great. Yeah. You know, fantastic means there's an there's a there's an element of fantasy to it. You you cannot believe it. Right. Right. Like unbelievable is now means great. Yeah. You know, like everything just means great. And and they had these words all had very specific meanings when okay. they were invented. Yeah. But, you know, awesome, fantastic, wonderful. Yes. All these things just now mean good. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, 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 it's sad, actually. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, and look, I'm, I say awesome all the time. I do too. And so, it, it, you know, I'm as guilty as anyone else. But, you know, when I, when I think about it and you asked about, did they really mean that word? Yes. You yeah. know what I mean? But you, you nailed it. Full of fury. Yeah. You you know, so it saddens me a little bit that that uh, language is used so casually now. Yeah, I think in in the, in the spoken word, it's, I give you a little break, but in the written word, certainly, I think it's, it's much well, more. Right, especially if you're trying to. One of the things I learned is that in the military, we think about effect, like these fifteen actions will lead to this conclusion, right. but. In reality, affect is so much more powerful, mm. you know, and not using affect as a verb, but as a noun, as a, as a response to stimuli. So you're thinking emotional, emotive kind of things. Like if we put out a message on the radio with psyops, if we're not getting the res- desired emotional response, mm-hmm. we're not communicating very well. And that's right. the whole thing of that, right? right? So it sounds like it's a similar thing where as the person who's writing this, you know, audition side that you have to learn you know, I really need to make sure that you are going to be able to convey the emotion I want, you know, and all the other, all the other audition things aside, maybe mm-hmm. you're not the guy, sure. maybe, you know, maybe you yeah, are the a, guy. They're like, a, he was not the guy for this, but you know who is? Yeah. Boom. Let's bring in yep. Broderick, you know, kind of thing. So when you do think about language and then the power of those words and you're a writer, you really do owe that to the person who's going to sit in that chair and try to deliver it well see i am not a writer so i but i as an actor i try to bend my will towards respecting Mm -hmm. what i think you know you can only guess until you get the job you can only guess right but respecting what i think their intention is and the only indication i have that of that is is the written word i was watching uh because you know i'm always trying to work on improving what i do as an as a host you know i mean i have a lot of interview kind of skills because i'm being a spy but you know i watched it cavett because there's an Dick older Cal. style, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. By the way, he's still alive, so I can't wait. I'm desperate to get him on the show. As uh-huh. long as you know, he's old enough that you have to wonder, like, is he as he have it all together? But if he does, I'm hoping that I can sit across from him. Wow, he, he's a master. Yeah, sure. So he was talking to Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah, and so it just like, wow. Let me just shut up and watch this like three times in a row. And it's just a short segment, but he talked about you know what he needs for and this is alfred hitchcock so he's a master at directing yeah but he talked about how you could take someone like jimmy stewart making a face you know acting in a certain way but the next shot can be of a baby with the mom or it can be an ingenue or it can be an older and you can make that guy into three different kinds of assholes or saints Mm -hmm. depending on that in-between shot so he's like how important is the actor Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, what was it? it was a Russian experiment in film where they uh-huh. just showed man's face and he, yeah. he just looked into the lens and he was yes. very neutral. It was That's the word I was looking for. Neutral, neutral okay. look, right? And then they showed a picture of, I think it was like a, a coffin. Uh-huh. And then it was a picture of a baby. And then yeah. it was a picture of a, a beautiful woman. And when they asked people, okay, what is he feeling now? What is he feeling now? And they were just reflecting what they were feeling. Like onto a neutral face. It was yeah. the same every time. <sighs> but they said, okay, now he's feeling sad. Yeah. Now he's in love. Now yeah. he feels paternally, you know, motivated, yeah. whatever it is. We're just projecting our feelings yeah. onto this canvas. So, yeah. I mean, you hopefully the director is making and the actor is working with the director to make that projection kind of focused. Yeah. But you're right. It's it, There's a lot of our own things. You know, like when I watched A Star is Born. A Star is Born. So yeah. I was watching A Star is Born. And I've had a uh, I've had an addict girlfriend before, and so I'm like, I'm just like vomiting my emotions all over this yeah, movie that's yeah. designed to pull that out of me, sure. you know. And I'm just like, God, what a genius way to make me respond. Because when I watched the Chris Christopherson Barbara Streisand version, mm-hmm. not it, doesn't, it didn't work for me, right? But this version, watching just that part of the train wreck, and I was like, Oh yeah. You know, I enjoyed the film. I shouldn't say I loved it. Very well made. Yeah. I felt like it could have ended with him in the garage. Yeah. It was 20 minutes too long. Okay. You didn't need the, the bit at the end. Yeah. But that's just me. I uh, I think I favor that model of a movie more. I mean, definitely don't need a two-hour movie all the damn time. Mm-hmm. I'm no longer into the roller coaster comic book 
thing where it's like this impossible scenario and right, this right. impossible scenario. And con- I would rather have something that's more of a thriller, I suppose, sure. than than uh, the roller coaster thing. But also, if I've got Lady Gaga there to to bring it home, I wasn't mad at them for doing that. But I'm I'm with you, like. That's the moment, yeah. you know. Cut the black fade to black, whatever. You yeah, and, and by the way, if that was a surprise to anyone, yeah, you know, they they just haven't been alive long enough, or right, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, it, you know, it, yeah, it was, it, it, well, it was comparable mm. in Godfather Two uh, when Robert Duvall goes to the old Italian guy who's in federal custody, and they basically have a speech, and nothing is said, but everybody knows at the end of this whole mm. thing, we're going to have the Italian mob guy opening his veins because he says he's going to do it you right, know right it's the same kind of thing where you have the uh, the record exec basically telling the bradley cooper character like you know this is never going to happen with you and so we all know yeah, yeah. but even knowing it still hits you with those yeah you know? yeah it was like i said it was a well-made movie and i loved the, yeah. the the bits of them playing together i'm, I'm a former musician and and uh i really do miss playing live and when i yeah. see something like that you know i'm like oh yeah, you know, I never did get to play in front of those huge crowds. I only did like the club circuit. You know? Yeah, CBGB. You talked about that. And everything. Just once, I would like to play a stadium right. somewhere. And you play guitar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when you when you look, before we get into music, cause I do want to talk because this show's got a lot of music roots in it. But I want to get back into the emotional thing. So what word, words mean things, right? Yeah, and absolutely. Kind of bringing in. I always like you too, so I, I talked about them entirely too much. But Bono explores love. But he explores it from multiple perspectives and spherically, right? Like, so there's ordinary love and there's, you know, new love and all these different ways. And it's like, you really think about what love can be and the, and the shot of, of love that comes out of that central core. It doesn't just go in one line. There's like the love you have for your kid. That's the love you have for your friend, you know, all different things and ways of doing it. Do you play with those emotions as you try to figure out what to fill up with? Like, this is this particular kind of love? This episode of the Break It Down Show is brought to you by Lions Rock Productions. That's us. We publish, evaluate, and develop podcasts just like this one, consult others to build their own, and create associated content and content marketing strategies. So if you're launching or expanding your social media presence, your business, or your personal brand, or if you just want to take your media presence to the next level, reach out to us on Twitter at P. Day Turner or at John LG 69 at the break it down show. There's a thousand ways to get a hold of us. Now enjoy the show. Do you play with those emotions as you try to figure out what to fill up with? Like this is this particular kind of love. Yeah, I think so. I mean, cause you know, that's, that's an emotion that, that God, hopefully yeah. everybody can relate to. You yeah. Know? And yeah, there are so many different flavors and colors of it. Mm-hmm. So I would guess because this is now now the only reason I'm hesitant to answer is because this is something that I I, I assume I do just automatically. Yeah. And so I I imagine it's colored by what the text is. Yeah. You know what the circumstances are. I try to match up the best case, and if it's something that actually happened to me, you know, if it's a similar situation that I can put a lot of myself into, yeah. I just use that. Right. You know, just memory work, and that's more into the method stuff. I yeah. think. But I you know I'll steal from whatever works. Sure. You know, so, you know, the path of least resistance, if I if I'm able to get there quickly yeah. by remembering, I'll give you a quick example. Oh, maybe I shouldn't. My mom might listen to this. <laughs> but abandonment, you know, mm-hmm. there was mm-hmm. there was a time when I was in the core and and, uh, and I went, to, you know, we used to go to Swoop Circle, which is yeah. something in, in at Lejeune. I was stationed on, on New River. And you go over to Swoop Circle, you pay a guy 20 bucks or 40 bucks or whatever, and he'll take you up to, to D.C. and drop you off. And they'll yeah. pick you up on Sunday night and you drive back together. And it's usually someone you don't know, another yeah. Marine or whatever. At Sunday night, I'm waiting to, for him to come pick me up, and he never shows. Oh, and wow. this is, you know, this is back before cell phone. Nobody has yeah. cell phone, you know, whatever. And he just never shows. It's getting later and later and later. And I'm like, and I spent all my money except for what I was going to pay the guy to get on, yeah. you know. And, uh, and I called my parents. And I was like, you know, I'm stuck in D.C. Can you give me, it's like, give me a plane ticket, something? And my, my, my mom said, you know, you got yourself there. Yeah. You get yourself back. And looking back now, I'm like, that was the right move. Yeah. You know, as a parent, you're like, you made your bed. Now, I don't know if she understood the stakes of being U.A. and shit like that. Boy, but, yeah. And out of bounds on a yeah. weekend. But as a parent, that was, you know, I was a, I was grown, I was a grown ass man. I was a mm-hmm. Marine. Take care of it, you know. Take care of and it. And I yeah. eventually did. I showed up midday the next day and yeah. got a got a got a, a stern talking to from my sergeant major about swoop circle and blah yeah. blah blah but i was relatively new to the squadron so they they uh they kind of let it slide but the feeling when she said she wasn't going to help me yeah i felt betrayed and abandoned 
and I use that a lot. Like yeah. that's something that's so still so very fresh in me. Like I can if 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 there's some kind of disappointment or something yeah. I need to draw on, I go to that. And it still works for me. We had a guy that he plays Suge Knight a whole lot on the show. Uh, and he was talking about the damage that he respects the damage that can happen by playing Suge a whole lot. Because Suge is, is a monster. I mean, for the most part, you know, yeah. like willing to harm people for his own benefit. Yeah. That's, it doesn't get much worse than that. So uh, and if Suge, if you're listening, uh, God bless, get better. Yeah. Dominic is his name. And, and he looks like he looks the part. And I'm like, do you worry that maybe you're causing some internal mental damage by accessing this person that much. And he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm aware that there's a danger there and I try to account for it. I mean, I still do my job yeah. and I do it well, but I am going into a part of me that is not the best part. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So do you have similar kind of concerns when you play someone that's evil? It's funny. I'm working on this and, and you know, when I, when I work out with Lacey group, I've been working on some characters that are, I have difficulty with cruelty. Mm -hmm. Um, I can be an asshole. Like uh, there's a, I played a, a character in Power on Stars where I was a NYPD detective. Yeah. And I'm at a crime. It's my crime scene, yeah. and some Fed comes rolling in. Yeah. And you know, I'm like back to the wall. You know what I mean? Like I, I can be a scrappy little dog. Yeah. And be a jerk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I feel like I'm right. Yeah. But to be, oh, and I got to play the flip side of that equation where I'm the FBI guy rolling right. in on on an episode of SWAT. So I played both sides of that. But I have difficulty being cruel mm. like for no reason like okay. being uh so your struggle was mean by being cruel as opposed to it's too easy for me to be cruel like it's the other oh way yeah it, like i have difficulty finding that in myself okay. so i have to like kind of like practice on your dogs yeah. and stuff no no i do it in, i do it in when we when we do scenes you know okay. like oh, I, I okay. choose scenes it, where i have gotcha. to do that you know i yeah. have to so it's like working out in the gym you know if you suck yeah. at squats get under a fucking bar right <laughs> yeah know? no it's great I, I, that, that's brilliant actually to be able to get into that so so the, you talked about flavors and colors with emotions. Do you have a sense for what those flavors and colors actually are? Like, do you think in those terms? Because there's that I is a thing. Uh, like I said, I I, I I don't know if I have a lot to say on that because I think it just happens automatically. Okay. You know, okay. it's, it's what the what the situation is in, yeah. in the in the story, what what the words are, yeah. and that just kind of you know it flows in and flows out. That so. makes sense. Yeah, because there's a guy Kaz who plays the drums, and there's a name for it. And it escapes me right now, but he drums by color. He actually experiences a color, and then he plays that groove based on that. And I'm really simplifying Is he on the spectrum? It. I don't the know, but it's a spectrum -y kind of thing that, for that sure. That absolutely is. Right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and it's got a full name, and it's, it's like many small words put together into something. Probably a German guy probably yeah. named it. But yeah, it's fascinating. And then we have another guy, another musician, who, and a veteran. Um, his name's Charles, Charles Quinn. And he plays bass, or he plays keys. And he leaves the whole building. He's uh -huh. not there anymore, and he goes to the color that he needs, and maybe it's his time in the Navy in Italy, and he thinks about Tuscan red. Not because Tuscany and red go together yeah, yeah. for any other reason, but in his mind, and that's the groove, that's the thing that he Interesting. plays. Interesting. Wow, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, I don't have anything like that. Mine's pretty straightforward. Yeah. You know, I try to use things I've experienced. Yeah. Or things I've seen, you know, I'll think about scenes from movies sometimes that just that, that make me just, you know, that kill me. When and you're playing the guitar, how often do you play guitar? Do you play at all anymore? Uh, I play, I try to play every day. Okay. You know, I got a guitar in the bedroom. I got several out yeah. here. I keep one on a stand just to pick up. And Oh, when I was doing True Detective in yeah. Arkansas, I, I, first thing I did when I got off the plane was, I, you know, they gave me a rental car and I went to Guitar Center. I bought a cheap little, yeah. you know, acoustic just yeah. to keep in my hotel room because I, I just need to play. You know, yeah. it's like a decompression thing. You okay. know? So, yeah, I play all the time. I don't, uh, I, now that, I, with music, I could see the color thing. I, I can understand that better. Mm -hmm. Do you leave the room when you play? Like, are you present in your situation or do you? No, I don't go anywhere. Like, I don't go bye-bye. You right. know, okay. I'm still very, very present. Okay. But when... When I'm playing well, mm -hmm. see, I'm not a shredder. I'm like, a, yeah. you know, I'm a Townsend fan, so okay. a lot of rhythm and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and, you know, I can play some lead. When it's flowing, man, you just, that's when I'll sing. You uh -huh. know what I mean? Okay. Like, I don't sing a lot, but if I'm feeling it, you know, then, I, then yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. you know, open my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I play a little bit too, and uh, I don't have the desire, and apparently I'm not going to develop the chops to play a lot of lead stuff. So, like, when I try to learn how to play Octopus's Garden when I was taking lessons, you know, that do 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 I'm like, oh, I, yeah, yeah. I just... I can never make my brain shut off long enough just to let my, and my, I can play it, but I have to like 
put my tongue out and look at my hand, you know, yeah. like uh, everything but play it well, you know, and, mm-hmm. and so I, I don't do that. But the rhythm part, that's all I really need. And then I struggle with keeping my voice and then like the the key in sync, which is actual singing. But if I didn't have to worry about being a slave to the other one, mm-hmm. I'm not good enough of a player to play in the key that's most comfortable for my voice, maybe. Yeah. You know, where yeah, it most naturally that. sits. Like sure. it's actual, like, you know, I'm always in a, a minor seventh key is where my voice <laughs> yeah, likes yeah. to be. I'm yeah, not yeah. good enough to do that. But I wanted to ask you about your music. So you don't leave the room, but you play. Do you play your own things? Do you play no, other people's things? No, I'm not a writer. Things? Okay. I play other people's stuff. So you play other people. What, what comes to you? Like when you sit down and you want to warm up, what do you just go to right away? Usually Thunder Road, Springsteen. Yeah. You know, that's, you know, I grew up listening to Bruce. Sure, and, and you don't have a choice. I'm yeah. from the Jersey Shore, yeah. yeah. Right. So usually Thunder Road, but I like a lot of riffs. I like, like Townsend did a lot of little triads with pedal mm-hmm. tones running underneath, like Substitutes, one of my favorites. You know, yeah. I'll do that. I'll do maybe a little Tom Petty something or other. But yeah, things that feel good under my fingers and, and you know, resonate and kind mm-hmm. of fill the space. That's been more, you know, since I stopped playing in a band and when I was in a band, we played our own stuff. Sure. I just didn't write it. So right. I don't consider it my stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah. I got you. <laughs> but I, I'm liking more stuff where it's, big sounding uh, you know i like strumming but also picking some mm-hmm. melodies out and stuff like that getting into more of that because when you play by yourself you gotta you know yeah when i first came back from combat i did a lot of uh, race car driving with my friends uh-huh. and there's no room for anything else but that windshield and what's in it gotcha and just you know so that all the other stuff is just not important yeah anymore. i think when you're in the right space it, everything else kind of goes away i don't mean to say that that can't be broken instantly by you know sure. papa yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah 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 but uh uh so i you know that's why I, i'm afraid to use the word that I, you know i don't go anywhere i'm still very present right. but there is that kind of feeling where like i said when it's when it's flowing you know and and, yeah. and it just sounds good and and so yeah it definitely fills me up that way yeah and it's usually playing an old favorite you know yeah you know i don't i don't really get that way experimenting because i don't i don't i don't experiment that much i might experiment on on new ways to play a song mm-hmm. you know or if it's a song i haven't played before yeah. but then i'm much more conscious because you're still trying to figure it out you know right right but i'm not a combat veteran you know i served during relative peacetime you know yeah. a couple of things happened while i was in but i always seemed to miss them you know i'd be yeah. in the mediterranean when yeah. the other half of my squadron gets called yeah. up for operation praying mantis or right you know whatever while i did have i did struggle with reintegration a little bit mm-hmm. i never had to deal with with some of the things that, that the guys and women have to deal with nowadays when you think back on your service you know, a lot of things i get uh we had a number of actors tito ortiz is a good example uh-huh. he's desperate to prove to us that he could hack it Right, and we're like Tito. You're you're fine. You you can hack it. <laughs> we get it. You're not just an elite athlete. You're a world champion amongst elite athletes. You know, like you're tough enough. Oh, do you mean like ha- hack it in have combat? A longing, or yeah. Like just in general. Like he's like, I want to go through Marine Basic boot camp, and I'm like, there's no point. Don't yeah, don't yeah. like you don't. So do you have that similar kind of sense where like you you not regrets or anything, but like, I just wish I had my chance to take that deployment. Yeah, well, you're definitely hitting hitting on the right note for me. I, I do deal with some, I don't know if it's regrets, but right. wondering. Yeah, wonder, sure. You know, and look, I was in a support MOS. So, I mean, you know, it's not like I was a door kicker even when I was in. Yeah. You know, I didn't even get to practice door kicking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I was in logistics and embarkation, man, yeah. in an attack helicopter squadron, but... But uh, vital work, by the oh, way. Oh, absolutely, you know? yeah. absolutely. And, and you but know it's what? easy to beat yourself up over something yeah. that you didn't have control over. Yeah, and, and I and I, I I used to struggle with that a little bit, especially post nine eleven. You know, yeah. And um, uh, it was actually uh, Command Sergeant Major Jeff Mellinger who, who kind of wrote me a note one day. I, I don't know if I asked him about it or or maybe he picked something up and something I wrote on Facebook or I don't know. And he and he just said, "Look, you know, you served your time. You 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 did your role. You know." Yeah. And uh, I don't remember his words exactly, but it made me feel comfortable in my yeah. own skin as far as that goes. So post nine eleven, I've kind of re, I, I I've rediscovered the veteran community, mm-hmm. or I should say, I rediscovered the military community because once I got out, I was done. Right. You know, I like I, I didn't. There was nobody around me that was a yeah. veteran or anything like that in New York City, or at least you know, not that I knew. I'm sure yeah. there are tons of them. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, but. Post nine eleven, I just 
I've wanted to do my part to continue to serve in a support role like I did in the military, you know, yeah. like just support veterans organizations or, or whatever, you know. Yeah, no, I mean, it's that's exactly right. How do you continue to serve? Because you do have anybody who raises their right hand has that in them, whether or not they're able to pursue it or whatever. We all have this desire to serve, to, to say, no, it's OK. I'll do this. Right. I will help here. I will put myself in danger. And, and the sergeant major was right. You. You raise your right hand and you work at the needs of the Marines, you mm. know, and and you did exactly what you were supposed to do and you serve honorably. But we do. We are hard on ourselves about yeah. those things. Yeah. Even like I'm a I'm I a think fifth- it's just a male thing. Oh, I mean, okay. obviously, I think it's it's exacerbated by being a, being yeah. a veteran, yeah. you know, and, and not getting called up when when it when it goes down. But I think like like with Tito Ortiz, you know, the guy's yeah. a warrior, you know, so so I think it is a male thing. Yeah, you, you might be right, because I have a little bit of it, too, where nobody's got more combat time than I do. I would go outside the wire all the time, you know, sometimes with a patrol, sometimes, you know, with very little support, I had to realize that like, no, actually I was doing it. I actually did those things. They actually are crazy and impossible. And I should be dead several times over. But even that, with that level of experience, I've had to go, no, it's actually okay. Like I I was a spy. I went on a thousand missions. I really talked to all these different people. Because in my mind, it's like, well, you know, maybe I should have just got a long tab or maybe I should have gone to this, you know, maybe I should have gone Delta. Right, I did right. all these things, but I didn't do this. Like, yeah, it's not regrets. It's just, no, it's, it's, you know, it's always I won't say that's obviously not every male, but it, it, yeah. it's certainly a male trait to kind of push a little further. It's our mindset. Yeah. Folks that join the military, generally speaking, yeah. you, you, you. You, you know, you're, you're always willing or, or looking at that next level and yeah. saying, oh, you know, if only I'd if only I'd done that or, you know, because that's I don't know. Do Some th- of us have more of it than, than others. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, I would I would have signed up. Like, Give me 0311. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, that, OK. So would you tell young Michael like, hey, you may want to pursue that. The, again, not regrets, but like an informed decision, you know, where you're like, you know what? I don't want to be in this support role. I want to be. Whatever, more out front, 0311, or maybe I want to, you know, know that I'm going to deploy on a ship more or whatever. Only, only as an old man. Okay. You know? First, let me say this. Yeah. I wouldn't change. I've made a lot of mistakes. Yeah, yeah, life. of course. I wouldn't change anything because it got me to where I am now. Right, right. You know, maybe I wouldn't have met my wife. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, so who knows? Right. So I don't know if I'd change anything. But everything else, if everything else could be the same, yeah. I would have actually, I would have I gone the other way. Mm. And I would have signed up for six mm-hmm. and gotten my goddamn uh, broadcast journalism uh, MOS. Yeah, you go. See, yeah. See, nice. I, like I, they, you know, they they get they put all these like uh, they put four things in my MOS package. You know, sure. like it could be this if you sign up for four. It could be this, this, yeah. this, or this. It's broadcast journalism, photo journalism, mapping and surveying, uh-huh. and logistics and embarkation. They're like, put your top three, and I put them. You know, that that three: broadcast yeah. journalism, photo journalism. Eh, mapping and surveying sounds interesting. Okay. Do that. Yeah. And I didn't even put, yeah, of course, they give me logistics and vacation. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, you know, needs of the Marines, right? But, but I knew, you know, even back then I wanted to be an actor, so I figured broadcast journalism was a way to get sure. a little camera time or yeah. whatever. and At least have some experience of how that whole system works, right? Right, yeah. and within the Marine Corps, I mean, it's fucking great. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But, you know, look, I, I look back, it's still the greatest thing I've ever done as right. far as for myself. Yeah, because and look, I did the, uh, you know, I don't want to. I'm not trying to talk down my service, but I mean, I did. I wasn't asked a lot. There wasn't, you sure. know, they didn't ask much of me. You yeah, know, go through boot camp, uh-huh. right? Earn the title. Yeah, do your job. Yeah, do your job. And sometimes I failed at that, but other times I excelled. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so earning the title of Marine, getting through boot camp. I was, you know, I'm still a little like a, a small dude, but but back then I was tiny. Yeah, and that's why I chose the Marines. And so to 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 achieve that at the time just told me, look, dude, if you bend your will to it, you can do it. Yeah, and that's why I was able to come out to Hollywood at 40, you know, years old. And, yeah. and, and start a career. Yeah, it's well, incredible. Late thirties, late thirties, but still. But either way, I mean, you you have done something. Everybody comes to this town who wants to be an actor with a similar thing, whether they come at at eight years old or mm-hmm. they come at 55 years old and they walk in and they're like, I'm going to do this. But the dream isn't the hard part. You know, the hard part right. is, is figuring out, making the mistakes, making the right mistakes, yeah. saying, you know, saying yes and getting better. I mean, all of those, there's so many things and you can do everything right and never even get. Oh, absolutely. And you could be supremely talented and not, and uh, well, look, if you do everything right and you're supremely talented, yeah. there's a really good chance you're, you know, you're yeah. going to do okay. But you can be extremely talented and not 
do the right things yeah. or not say yes at the right time or, oh. you know, whatever it is. So, yeah, it, it's a lot to try to navigate. Yeah. And even if you're supremely talented, you have to work as hard as your peers do. Because absolutely. if you don't, there is a guy who is going to outwork you. Yes, absolutely. And that person will get your role, you know, and... and our show is full of people like that where I wasn't the best bass player. You know, I wasn't the well, whatever I wasn't, you know, all of these things, but I was able to stay in it. I was able to outwork everybody else and people had life choices and they made not, not right. a bad choice, but yep. they went a, I went B. And then now that's why I have this ridiculously impossible gig where I get to do what I love for a living because I was able to, you know, keep grabbing balls at second base when everybody else was tired. I yep. had another hundred in me. Yeah, you know? yeah, you're, or you're 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 hustling. As soon as you hit the fa- as soon as you cross that foul line on the field, you're running, uh-huh. and yeah. you're running until you cross the foul line off the field. That's yeah. my dad taught me. Yeah, you know, as soon as you hit that field, you're running. Well, I love it, man. Listen, it's been about an hour. I don't want to take all your day. I don't give a crap, man. <laughs> if there's anything else you want to ask me, <laughs> no, no, this is great. I mean, this, yeah, this I'm is, good. This is I'm perfect. Good. Yeah, yeah cool. and I really appreciate being able to share time in your in your gym out here and my little my little man cave. Yeah, <laughs> slash photo studio. Yeah, slash, that's where I do uh, my self tapes and everything. Yeah, yeah. Would you play a song for us to close us out? Sure. You don't got to sing anything. Yeah, yeah. I don't got to sing nothing? No, nope, you don't got to if you don't want to hear all well, of that. Let's see. Hold that a second. What do you want me to play here? Whatever comes to mind. Okay. Bruce. That's Bruce. Michael Broderick, everybody.